In this episode, we're talking all about importing your footage. So I'm going to show you three different ways of importing your footage into Premiere and how to organize that using bins and colors. So let's get into it. So once you've just opened up Adobe Premiere Pro, this is what your window should look like. Your workspace should be pretty blank. So to begin with, we need to import our footage. Now, the first way of importing your footage is quite simply to just go to your finder or go to your documents. We'll scroll through to the footage and then you just drag all your footage into the project window. Now, there you go. That has been imported. And as you can see, if we click on the footage, you've got all of the footage sitting in Premiere. Alternatively, you can do the second option and that is to go into your project tab. We'll right click, press import. And then of course you can just go through the process of finding the footage, selecting everything and importing it that way. The problem is though, that is fine for smaller slash intermediate level cameras. But when you start to use more advanced cameras, especially cameras that use a raw codec, they split the videos into different smaller video sizes. So Red, for example, compresses their footage into four gigabyte chunks. So a longer take could consist of anywhere between eight, nine, 10, or even higher amounts of chunks of four gigabyte videos. So that means if you're just dragging and dropping the footage in like this, then you're only going to import a specific part of the footage. So I'm going to show you the third option, and this is probably the cleanest and most professional way of importing your footage, regardless of which camera you're using. So we'll go over to the media browser tab. We're going to go down into your hard drive of choice or your desktop, scroll through to the footage, select everything, right click and press import. Importing the footage this way is going to preserve all of that detail and it is going to make sure that any clips that are split are joined in the edit. So now that you've got your footage imported into Adobe Premiere Pro, we need to begin organizing this. So I'm just going to expand this window. And of course, if you click on this window, so we'll click the project tab, go to window, and then you can go maximize frame. And this means the frame has been maximized and we don't have anything else. So we can just focus on organizing the footage. So first of all, I like to create bins or folders. So there's two ways of doing this. So you can right click, go new bin, and then you just rename that as footage. Or if for some reason that isn't working, you can just go over to this bottom right section. You can see you've got new item and on the left of that, you've got new bin. So just press new bin and that will create a new folder. So just for clarity, folders are called bins in Premiere. So a bin is basically just a folder. So create as many bins as you like or folders as you like, and then just go through and rename all of these. So we'll call this GV and then we'll call this uh, interview. I don't actually have any interview footage, but if you did, then obviously this is the process you'd follow. So from here, you can just select all of the relevant clips and then just drag those into the corresponding folders. So that means when you close these down, you can see we've just got those two folders and we don't have those clips. I know I've only got a few video clips and you're probably wondering what's the point of organizing these few clips. And I completely agree with you. If this was my edit, I probably wouldn't bother organizing these few clips because it's very quick to navigate to these. But if you're in a larger project and you've got multiple different cameras and you've got different audio that you need to sync to the video and you've got pictures and assets and motion graphics, it can get very confusing very quickly. So making sure that you're organizing your footage as you're importing everything is really fundamental and super important. So adding your footage or adding your assets into folders is a really useful way of organizing your footage. But I also find that color coordinating footage is very handy as well. So let's say we want, so let's say footage that has a higher frame rate can be a specific color and then real time 25 frames per second footage can be a different color. Now in my example, I only have 25 frames per second footage. So just pretend that some of these are 50. So we'll select the ones that we want to label as 25. So we'll go through label all of those and if you're holding command on your keyboard and clicking, then you can select multiple clips. Then we're just going to right click. We'll go down to a label and you can see we've got all of these different colors here. So I'm going to assign this to manga and this is the shade of orange. If you wanted it to be different though, then we can go ahead and change that. So we'll go label and we'll go for forest. And this is a nice shade of green. And then we'll select all the remaining clips and we'll go ahead and change the color of these. So we'll right click label and we'll change these to teal. And that's like a dark blue, dark green. But this is really useful because it means you can very quickly see which footage is what just by looking at the specific colors. 
So if you've assigned this green to real time footage and this teal to slow motion footage, it means if you need slow motion footage, all you have to do is just look for that color and then you just double click on the corresponding clip. Now I'm just going to show you one more useful thing when it comes to organizing your footage and searching for relevant footage and that is a search bin. So you're just going to right click anywhere in here then you're just going to search for a new search bin so we'll select this and this will come up with this create search bin window. So as you can see you can search the metadata so that means you can select any specific metadata here so let's go for let's go for frame rate so we'll go frame rate so let's search for only 25 frames per second footage. So we'll search for frame rate, find 25, and then we can also add an and or an or. And then you can add another thing that you want to search for. So let's go for media type and we'll search for MXF files. So once you've inputted your data here, you'll just press OK. And that's going to create this bin here. So when we click this bin, it should come up with all footage that has a frame rate of 25 frames per second and a media type of MXF. Now, unfortunately, it hasn't found anything, so we're just going to delete that. We'll create a new search bin. And rather than doing the type, we'll just go for frame rate. So let's go frame rate, 25 frames per second, press OK. And as you can see, that has created this bin, frame rate 25.00. And then all of the clips that have a frame rate of 25 frames per second are in this bin. Now, the great news with these search bins is you can search for anything on any specific metadata. So you can go audio info, captions, clients, comments, description, field order, field name, file path, frame rates, good hidden label, log notes, media type, name, offline properties, scene, shots, sound roll, status or tape name. And then you've got video codec and video info as well. So if you want to be very specific, then you can use this search bin to search for specific types of footage. Now, there's one more thing that I want to show you when it comes to organizing your footage, and that is to add a description. So let's go up to this clip here. So 5190 is this shot here. So this is a static, as you can see, if I'm scrubbing through, this is a static shot. Now we'll just expand this window again. So maximize frame. We'll go up to this one here. So 5190, then we'll go all the way over to description. I might have to scroll over and we're just going to name the description static as you can see and by doing that it's put this clip here because this isn't a duplicate because this is just that same clip in another destination it's changed this to static and this to static as well because it's the same clip now you can just work through all of your other clips so as you can see this is a pan so you can maximize this frame again We'll go over to this description and we'll call it pan. And then of course you can then use the search bin later on to search for your static shots, your panning shots, your gimbal shots, and just organize them like so. And then of course you've also got your capture settings, status, scene, shot, good, and hide. So if you love this shot, you can just label it as good. And that means when you search for good shots, only the ones that you've marked as good will turn up. And then of course you've got scene and shot numbers. So if we were shooting a narrative scene, for example, would go scene one, take one, and that is going to label everything accordingly. So as you can see, you can get really specific and really intricate with organizing your footage. And like I said, on a smaller project, you probably won't feel the need to, but as your projects start to grow and you've got more and more footage and more complications into your project, it's a really good idea to start organizing your footage, placing them in bins and color coordinating everything accordingly because it's going to make your life so much easier when you're looking for that specific shot. And there you go. That is how you import your footage into Adobe Premiere Pro and organize that using the project window.